I have here in front of me quite, quite a famous calculus book. Calculus by James Stewart, the eighth edition. Calculus Early Transcendentals, arguably the most popular calculus book in the entire world, if you can believe it. Uh, used in many, many classes across the United States, across probably Canada, all of North America, maybe even other parts of the world. Let's look at this book. And I'm gonna do my absolute best here to review it for you. You can see it's obviously quite a thick book, a little bent here. Looking at the contents of this book, right? Functions and models. I always uh, never really know what to say about this. I don't know how essential this is to the book because going into calculus, you should have a pretty good idea of what a function is. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of fundamental to many areas of mathematics, but I do kind of like that if you do kind of <laughs> don't remember what a function is, or maybe you need a quick review, there is a small section in here, chapter one on functions, what it means to be a function, different function representations, maybe a little bit of review of pre-calc stuff in here as well, exponential functions, logarithm and, logarithms and inverses, things that are essential to calculus. But we're really starting with the actual calculus here in chapter two, limits and derivatives, obviously, the main point of calculus kind of is what are limits, derivatives, and integrals. Chapter three, big section on differentiation rules. One thing I like, it does include hyperbolic functions. If you can see, I know not every single calculus course or calculus sequence at colleges includes these hyperbolic functions, at least not where I went. And by the way, this might be um, out of order depending on where you go to school. I know for me, I've seen it in uh, different places. Sometimes um, in Calc 1, you do derivatives of logarithms, and sometimes in Calc 2, you do derivatives of logarithms and, and exponentials. It really depends. Um, this book has them all in Chapter 3, which I think it makes a lot of sense. Just put all the derivative rules in one chapter. And you know, after you learn derivatives, you should learn applications, right? Applications of the derivative. So here we're talking about max and min values, mean value theorem, curve sketching, optimization, Newton's method, really, really foundational things to calculus. Of course, five, six, and seven, the other main, the main thing of calculus, right? Integrals, integrals, applications, and those techniques of integration. So here we're doing antiderivatives and the fundamental theorem of calculus and application, we're talking areas, areas stuff, volume stuff, finding the work and averages, and then techniques of integration. This is usually techniques of integration where you start Calc 2, learning things like integration by parts and partial fractions, those, those sort of things. And I thought this is a, maybe a little bit weird to me. You've, you've a, an eighth chapter further applications of integration. I don't know why we need to do one chapter on applications and then another chapter on applications. Maybe, maybe that could be condensed into one chapter, but I guess uh, sometimes these, these chapter six applications, namely area between curves and the volumes by shells and slicing and so forth, that's usually taught in Calc 1, whereas some of the other applications like arc length, and maybe you, maybe you do volume, or um, area of a surface by revolution, maybe you do that in Calc 2. Typically that's surface area is more of a Calc 3 thing. So I, I don't know, I don't know how much this chapter makes sense being here, but hey, what do, what do I know? Chapter nine, differential equations. Again, depending on which calculus class you take, what your calculus sequence is, you might see a little bit of, of differential equations in Calc 2. Uh, really depends on your professor. I like that it's in the book though. And it also makes um, sense kind of to put it in here because you do need to know integration stuff and how to integrate things uh, to solve some differential equations. But there are also series solutions to differential equations. So you might be able to argue that this chapter belongs after chapter 11, sequences and series, uh, goes both ways. Parametric and polar. Uh, this, this is kind of the odd <laughs> section here. Um, uh, for Calc 2, you usually learn this and you usually don't really use it again, maybe till Calc 3. So I almost like putting this also after um, chapter 11. I would think if I was structuring this book, I would go, I would go integrals, 
and, and then I would probably put, uh, you know, applications of integrals and then sequences and series, differential equations, and then parametric and polar. Because once you do parametric and polar, then you start moving into the 3D stuff, the world of Calc 2. You talk about, you know, vectors and more geometrical things and then more vectors and then partial derivatives and multiple integrals and vector Calc. That's all the nature of Calc 3. There's three-dimensional stuff. So... At the end here, it's definitely not something that's probably in every calculus textbook. Second order differential equations, I don't know how much um, you're really getting into that if you're taking a calculus course. Usually, at least in the United States, differential equations is, is its whole own course kind of after you take calculus or maybe you take it like right after Calc 2. Uh, so I don't know if this section really needs to be here uh, and I don't know how many professors actually get to chapter 17 if they're getting through all of Stuart. But, you know, it's, it's, it is nice that it's in here. Again, this second order differential equation stuff, I, I would kind of, you know, I would kind of leave that to, to, a, to a differential equations textbook. I think it's okay that there is a chapter here on differential equations. Again, I'm not really sure why you couldn't put the second order differential equations stuff in chapter nine. I mean, you know, this is, this is just my opinion off the top of my head right now. Um, you can see that this is a very thick book. I mean, this is like literally thousands of pages. Well, not thousands, but like um, nearly, <laughs> nearly that. I mean, it's over a thousand pages. I, I have to give this book credit. I mean, I can't imagine how long it took to really, to really do this. Uh, this is kind of cool. There's a diagnostic test here. I like these sort of things, kind of tests like, are you ready for calculus, you know? Um, this is just like some basic algebra stuff, uh, some things you would see in a pre-calc class. And, and this is really a good thing to test yourself before you get invested in a whole course, you know, maybe spending thousands of dollars on a class. Make sure you're, you're really ready. There's plenty of nice pictures in here. And I don't know how many students really pay attention to these pictures, but it is kind of nice. They try to throw in some, some real life things. And uh, this, this preview of calculus is kind of nice, kind of motivates why we're learning calculus. I mean, some of the, the main reasons calculus was even studied is because of this so-called area problem. You know, we wanted to find the area under a curve. And to do that, we need, well, the fundamental theorem of calculus. And it's very related to this tangent line problem. I mean, the other reason calculus was more or less invented is we wanted to find instantaneous rate of change, instantaneous velocity, or in other words, a slope of a tangent line, the slope of a line that only touches a curve at one point. You know, if you have algebra, you're probably very proficient at finding the slope of a line between two points, but how do you find the slope of a line at just one point? Well, if it's on a curve, we can use calculus. And there's a few other, oh, I wouldn't really say less important, but other, other preludes of calculus, talking about sequences and limits. And then of course we get into chapter one and there's a, you know, they like to start the chapter off, which I think is kind of nice, you know, um, talk, it talks about the chapter in maybe some context. So maybe they put a, a picture here describing here, this is talking about the best way to represent a function. And here's, here's a way to represent a function, which is kind of neat. And uh, so sometimes it'll have that, or sometimes it'll have like, if I can try to find them, find it here quickly. There'll be like a, a picture of somebody, maybe like Gauss. I won't be able to find it. The thing that I do love that this book does is what, when, what I think all calculus books should do is they like highlight or outline or bold the important definitions and theorems. So here you can see, I mean, if you, if you wanted to skim the chapter and get nothing else, you would just look at this outline thing. A function is this. And you know, that would give you, you know, a good idea. There's lots of examples. I love that they're worked out. Like here, example three, do this, it's completely worked out. That's really good, I think, for students and you know anybody who wants to teach themselves. All you have to do is look at the example, look at how it's worked out. You can probably teach yourself this. A lot of it even. So that's chapter one. You know, mostly, mostly review stuff. And again, here's another another example. They've like bolded and outlined an important thing here. And of course, like many math textbooks or especially calculus books, you know, there's many odd problems that are solutions in the back from the end of the section 
questions. There's lots and lots of exercises in here. The ones in red are supposed to be especially hard. I think I've probably found ones that in red that I don't know that are very hard. They just make you think. I think I've also found ones in red that uh, really, really stumped me. So um, there's that. Also some of them, maybe you can see here, they have this little, little graph icon like next to 27 there. I guess that means you're supposed to be using a computer or something that can, something that can graph. You can just see there's tons of problems here. And even these later ones, they, they really make you think. Hardly ever students go back to these late ones, but if you can do these problems, it's not always recommended, but if you can do these later problems, I mean, you'll be super set for the test. So you should probably be focusing on, you know, at least if you have one through, this section has, you know, 77 problems. Maybe you should be focusing not on one, two, and three, but maybe, you know, in the 20s and 30s and 40s would probably prepare you very well. They usually get harder as they go. And I like this. I mean, students usually don't take advantage of this, but there's reviews, like, at the end. Students always are asking, you know, can we have an exam review? I mean, it's right here. You can use it yourself. As long as you're smart and you kind of you kind of tailor the questions to what, what your professor is asking. But I mean, there's even true and false. My calculus teacher asked true and false questions, believe it or not. Not every calculus teacher will do that. But if your calculus teacher asks true and false, here's a good prep for true and false. I think that's very nice. I think this is a very underutilized resource. Even here, you can see a whole section, principles of problem solving. I, I think this is great info that, you know, most people will just buy the book or rent the book and kind of just do the problems that are assigned and not really take advantage. There's tons of resources in here. Chapter two, getting into the stuff. And I mean, the chapters are laid out pretty much the same. Um, I'm hoping that, yeah, this is what I want to show you. Now in this particular edition, and yours might have this or not, it has like these reference pages in the back. So you can cut these out or you can pull them out, kind of just like formula sheets. So here, you know, you've got like the chapter one thing and all the important formulas from it. So like geometry stuff, algebra rules. You've got like the trig functions and their graphs here. And here, this is really important. Many calculus books have this, but this one I really like has all the rules for derivatives and all the rules for antiderivatives. I mean, if you just wanted like, the fastest approach to learn calculus. You would just take these reference pages and memorize them. I mean, this these general derivative rules right here, one through eight, that's like two weeks of lecture right there, down to eight rules. Same with all these other ones. And I mean, this goes up, there's tables of integrals in here. I mean, this isn't exactly how you'd wanna spend, you know, a, a Saturday night, or maybe it is, I don't know. I've spent Saturday nights looking at this stuff. And this is just, I mean, come on, there's like an entire class here in a few pages if you have, if you do in fact have these. There's concept checks and lots and lots of information in this book. There's more than I could ever really uh, get through. Of course, there's an index in the back, but I wanted to show you that the, the back of the book has the solutions to the odd number of questions. If you want the solutions to the even questions and even the worked out solutions. The solution manuals are out there. I know at the tutoring center um, that I used to work at had a solution manual. I think some libraries have them on college campuses. I don't think you can actually order them. I think you kind of have to be affiliated with the university to get your hands on one. But this does have the answers to odd problems. And also in the back here, there's these appendices like on trigonometry, or just notation stuff. I mean, <laughs> this is just such a massive, such a massive work. And you can see even some of these are color coded. When you get to Calc 3, there's like these three dimensional diagrams. Very, very nice. I, I guess what this really comes down to, if you really want my opinion, I think this is the book to go with. I mean, this is, this book is the standard more or less for a reason. I have never seen a calculus book as good as this one. If I do recommend a calculus book, um, this is probably one of one of the two, if not the one that I recommend. You can really teach yourself calculus using this just by reading the examples, looking at the bold theorems, and doing some practice and looking at the review. I mean, you can really teach yourself this stuff. When I was going through, you know, whatever I was doing, I was able to teach myself a lot 
just using a calculus textbook. And I think a lot of people are intimidated by reading the textbook, but once you do it a little bit, you know, you can really wrap your head around it. And I, I really like this book. If you're interested, I will put a link in the description. You can go check it out for yourself. It's an affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. I like this book a lot. I think if your class is using Stuart, they're probably selecting the correct book. So if you do check this one out, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the review. Let me know if you have another calculus book that you like even more than Stuart. Maybe I'll give it a review, who knows. Thanks very much for watching this whole review. I know it was a long one and I hope you have a great day.